just took Hoochie Mama out of the refrigerator. <laughs> I should have probably recorded it, but I didn't. This is not my normal sourdough starter. This is the one that I started back in the early version of COVID in 2020 when everybody was freaking out. There wasn't any uh, yeast available at the store and the stores didn't have bread and all that stuff. There wasn't really a lot of sourdough recipes or anything online when I posted that video on how to make sourdough starter. But I call this Hoochie Mama because this is the first time I have fed her in 18 months. This will be the second time that I've done like a long not feeding thing. And uh, the first time I did one year, I went one year without feeding her and I brought her back. I think it took three days. And uh, now it's been 18 months and she hasn't been fed since that last time I did this experiment. I took out all except for 25 grams and then I added... 30 grams of wheat flour and 60 grams of water. Put a rubber band down here at the bottom. And uh, it is Sunday, the 28th, January 28th. And we'll see how long it takes to get her back going again. And by the way, I named her Hoochie Mama because if you know anything about sourdough, uh, it ferments and basically will turn into hooch and have like an alcohol smell. So, I got rid of all that discard. Doing some maintenance to Hoochie Mama. Out of my 100 grams that I'm going to do today, I need to do 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of water. I'll start with the water first. By the way, lukewarm water, not over 110 degrees. 123, close enough. Again, I need 50 grams flour I am just using plain old all-purpose flour I don't know why everybody gets like so tore up over sourdough sourdough has existed for like 6,000 years 50 grams flour it ain't got to be right. It could have been 49. It could have been 51. Hopefully I don't spill this too bad. Let me show you a trick. I just put the lid on. Kind of snug. And then I shake it up. Now I will take and take the lid off. And kind of stir it move it down that sort of thing but that's all i do normally scrape all the sides down i'm not particular on the flour i use i'm on well water or it's a cistern water catchment system so it's rain water that goes into a cistern and gets stored but i will use whatever flour i had just so happened to have I have this thing about waste. I don't like to waste anything. I'm probably one of the most frugal people y'all have ever met. So then I just put the lid back on it and wait. Oh, one other thing. So if you notice, there is a rubber band on the bottom of my jar. And there was actually two. There was one at the top. Let me loosen this lid up some. It don't have to be that tight now. But that one's just to rest there. So this one down at the bottom, if you see that you can kind of tell where the line is at for the sourdough. So I put this rubber band pretty close to that, which always stays about the same when I'm feeding it. Because I'm taking some out, I'm adding some in, but it stays about the same. Then when this gets strong enough and starts bubbling up, I can take this blue one and move it down to wherever it bubbles up to. So if I check this later today and it's up here, I can move this blue one down to here. Then I know how strong my sourdough is. And that's, that's kind of how I do it. I use the rubber band method. A lot of people have talked about doing this. That's kind of the way I do it. Um, this is a really old jar I've been doing sourdough in. At one time, you can kind of see right here, 
there's some uh, Sharpie marker. There's a line there and a line there, and then there's some numbers off to the side. What that was is that used to tell me when I'm at this much, it's got this many grams of sourdough. When I'm here, it's got that many grams. And I can always tell how many grams of sourdough is in it because in the top, I have what my jar weighs 828 grams empty so all i have to do at any time to know how much sourdough is in this i'm not going to take the rubber bands off but so we're going to include the way the rubber bands but all i have to do anytime i want to know turn my scale on put my jar on here it says a thousand and ninety so i subtract 828 from that and I know I've got, what, 262 grams of sourdough in there. Eight. But anyways, going to get back and do day three tomorrow. This is the temperature in my kitchen. And there is an upcoming video on why it is so cold. But it's by choice and not because I can't afford to pay the heat bill. <laughs> Anyways, that kind of changed how I was reviving Hoochie Mama on day two. Day one and day two is this cold. And then I have had a Broad and Taylor proofer for several years now since at least 2020. I think that's when I bought it. it might have been 2019. But I moved Hoochie Mama to a Broad and Taylor proofer with the temperature at 70 degrees and uh hoochie mama is doing pretty good this is the morning of day three but it's already looking promising because you can see where it has risen and fallen you can see that it's risen up to here you can see the level is down here and if we take the lid off I also had to put it in a smaller jar to put in here, but I kept the remaining jar because there's still some scrapings in there. You can see we have bubbles and we also have a grayish looking hooch on top. So what I'll do, I'll reduce this down to 10 grams of just starter. And I'll feed with 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. That will give me 110 grams. Um, I haven't fed it yet, but that's kind of the plan. I'm going to reduce it down day three to 10 grams again. And then I'll feed it 50 grams and 50 grams. That is a 1-5-5 five, five ratio. And uh, then I'll check it in about four to six hours to see how much it's risen. And if it's doubled in size, it's ready to use. So that means, you know, after 18 months of not being fed, just left in the refrigerator, she come back in three days. Now, I'm hopeful she'll rise and double in size after the next feeding. But there's a possibility it could actually be tomorrow. So this video is just to kind of catch you up. I and by the way, um, so I originally bought this proofer. I did a DIY one. And I can't remember if I posted the video or not, but the DIY one was basically just a styrofoam box that had a reptile heater in it and then a temperature control for the reptile heater. And I built that because I was making salt risen bread and salt risen bread has to be maintained at a specific temperature for many hours. And it's always cold in my house, even when I have the heat on, it's still cold. I only need 10 grams of the sourdough starter added to the 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. So what I do is I just weigh out my flour, then I add 10 grams from this jar into this. Alright, so turn my scale on. The scale is going to zero to what's already on her, which is 50 grams. So I'm going to take out 10 grams of this right off the top. Sometimes you might go over a little bit. You can tell I've probably done this once or twice. There's my 10 grams. So the rest of this is now considered my discard. 
I'm going to actually put that in a Ziploc bag and then I'll bring you right back. All right, so there's my discard in a Ziploc bag. I basically get as much as I can in a Ziploc bag. Then I rinse the jar out. Now I'm going to put this into this jar, hopefully without making a mess all over my countertop. Then I'm going to add 50 grams of water. And I had a little thing of water here set ready to go. Close enough. 51 is close enough to 50. I'm going to put that in there. So I went ahead and added and mixed that up and I readjusted my band to be pretty close to where it's at on the bottom. It ain't got to be perfect. Now this is going back in the proofer and I'll check it in four to six hours. If it rose up to like here, if it doubles, then we're ready to go. And now Hoochie Mama is back in the proofer, 70 degrees. I'll check it in about four to six hours. Now your discard, you can basically stick it in the freezer or you could use it right now to make any of the hundreds of discard recipes that are available on the internet. Just search for sourdough discard recipes on Google or whatever search engine you use. I should also mention I remove as much air out of the Ziploc bag as possible before sticking them in the freezer. And I also don't mix discards from my two different sourdough starters. This is Hoochie Mama. I marked the Ziploc from Hoochie Mama. And then I've got my regular discard that gets marked from my regular discard. Because they both have different flavor profiles. And whatever sourdough you make is going to taste different than anybody else's sourdough and vice versa. Even if you buy sourdough starter from somewhere else, after you feed it a couple of times, it's going to taste totally different. So uh, honestly, I don't see why people even buy sourdough discard starters off of someone else that's been dried out. Or sometimes they send them in liquid form like this um, because... You're not really saving any time or money or anything. You're not going to have the same taste or flavors their sourdough has after you feed it. So why bother? Just make it from scratch. This is the morning of day four. I went ahead and weighed out 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. Because I know that the total amount... Of starter that's in this jar is 110 grams so that's slightly less I should have actually done like 55 and 55 but that's all right so if I check this today you can kind of see that it's come up some but it's not quite as vigorous as I needed for it to be so probably after this feeding or the next one I should be good again so I'm going to add, this is kind of hard to do because I'm using different hands than I normally would. Add the flour, try not to make a mess, Ed. You're live on YouTube. After cancer, I need to change that to you're still alive on YouTube, right? Isn't that like, that's kind of a dark joke, isn't it? Oh, I get those dark jokes every now and then. And the water. Then give it a stir. I'm going to have to take this out for a minute. So now my rubber band's adjusted back up. Everything's ready to go. Put the lid back on it. And we'll wait four to six hours and see how much it grows. If it doubles in four to six hours, then we're ready to go. But 
even though it was doubled in the jar from like the last time, it took it about 12 hours to double. So that means it's still too weak. So we feed it again, we check it in four hours. If it's grown and doubled then, it's ready. If it's not, we wait until six hours, check it then. And you know, you could check it at the five hour mark too, but as long as it's in that four to six hour window that it doubles from the size of the where the rubber band's marked at, if it's, you know, twice that tall, then we're good to go. That's how you tell your sourdough starter is ready to go. Um, if it doubles in size in four to six hours right after you feed it. If it takes it 12 hours to double, it's not ready yet. You could probably still use it, but your bulk fermentation would be extremely long. And then your cold retard in the refrigerator would also be extremely long. So, you know, that's why everybody always recommends that it doubles in size in four to six hours. So that way it don't take near as long. So it's been four hours and I'm going to bring this up here. You can see that it has doubled in size. It's up to here now. Down here is where my rubber band's at. It's risen up to here. It has doubled in size, but that means that it's strong enough to use right now. However, another more important thing to know is how long it takes it to actually deflate. So it's been four hours, it doubled in size. I'm gonna come back in another hour and check it again to see if it started to deflate yet. And if it's still growing, it's still not at its optimum level. So, um, you basically need to find out where it stops growing at. So I'm gonna start checking it maybe every 30 to 60 minutes to find out where that's at. I'm gonna get another rubber band and kind of mark it now the level that it's at now so I can tell if it's still growing or not. You want to use it just as it pass, goes past its optimal level. That's when it stops growing and it starts to deflate. That is when the best time to use it is for baking. So I need to figure out what that time is before I can continue to the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that level with another rubber band. Again, I'll check it in 30 to 60 minutes and I'll determine what that time is and then I'll know uh, how long I have to wait after I feed it before I use it. Let me go ahead and show you what this sourdough looks like now. You can see how much we've risen. You can see the bubbles in it. You can see that it's inflated. You can see the top of it now. It smells heavenly. So we are ready. And I'm going to use the Broad and Taylor. I'm going to get set up. I will show you. Um, because this video is already getting pretty long. But this will end the revival of Hoochie Mama. And then I'll put a couple pictures up at the end and I'll have another video of the actual baking steps. How I go ahead and do my sourdough bread. And that will prove out that uh, Hoochie Mama works fine and that she tastes well.